In this problem, we're told about a particle that is barreling through space at a speed of 0.5 c, or half of the speed of light. Now we are asked to find the final speed that would be required of this particle, assuming a certain change in momentum. So for the sake of this problem and for the sake of the work I'm showing here, um, I'll assume we're looking for a change in momentum of 1%, though uh, whatever method we choose should work for any percent, you know, we'll just plug in the numbers. Anyway, but basically what the problem's asking is, uh, like, what the final speed would have to be for this specific change in momentum. Now, this is actually a fairly tricky problem. Um, since we're asking about, since the problem's asking about a momentum change, and we're only told about the speed, I think the first thing we should do is, de is determine what the initial momentum of this system should be. Now, uh, the momentum, first let's find the initial momentum. So we'll call that pi, p because that's the standard symbol for momentum, and sub i because it's the initial. Now, according to physics, the formula for momentum is equal to mv, where it's the mass of the particle times the velocity. Though we'll call it v sub i, since it's the initial velocity we're working with. However, this formula only applies in Newtonian physics. Since we're dealing with speeds super fast at, the, at half the speed of light, uh, we're going to have to go with relativistic physics here. So according to um, Einstein's theory of special relativity, uh, the relativistic formula for momentum when we're dealing with speeds this fast is actually the same formula except we're adding the Lorentz factor in, gamma. And I'll say sub i for that as well because... Uh, the Lorentz factor is based on the speed we're working with. Now first, let's try and get a rough approximation of what the initial momentum would be based on this speed. Now, uh, let's rewrite the Lorentz factor here, actually, because the Lorentz factor is equal to 1 over uh, the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. All in a square root right there. So if we're going to try and approximate the initial momentum here, let's take advantage of that formula. So that'll be, we have the m and the v at the top. So that's going to be m at the top uh, times our speed, so half the speed of light. So 0.5c divided by 1 minus uh, 0.5c again, in the denominator here, over c squared. So now plug this into your calculators to get an approximate. So notice that in the denominator here, these two c squareds will cancel out. So the denominator really just gives us the square root of 1 minus 0.5. So just the square root of 0.5. Either way, plug this into your calculator, and you find this approximates roughly to 0 0.577 times mc. Uh, I did not calculate, I did not include the speed of light, c, in my calculations here, because when we give our final answer, we will likely want to include uh, our answer in terms of c. So it's 0.577 times the mass, which is unknown, times c. But now we still haven't even begun to actually answer the problem yet, so let's reconsider what the problem's asking. We're looking for a change in some momentum, in my case, 1%. So that means that the final momentum of the system, the final momentum of the particle will be p sub f, final, p final, equal to the initial momentum plus um, the initial momentum again, except to whatever percent we're looking for. So in my case, I'm going to write 1 over 100, because that is the, um, the fractional representation of the percent. So just whatever the percent is divided by 100. So, for example, if you get 10%, then you'd write 10 over 100, or just 1 over 10 to simplify it. Or if you're looking for an increase of 100%, you'd write 100 over 100, or just 1. But either way, in our case, that is p sub i plus um, 0 0.01 times pi, or just shorten it down to 1 over 1.01 times pi. And our final momentum should be equal to 1.01 times the initial momentum. And remember, the final momentum can also be written as in the same way we wrote our initial momentum, where it's the Lorentz factor, except the final version of that, because again, the, the Lorentz factor is based on the velocity, times the mass, times the final velocity, 
and that's what we're trying to find. So if we rewrite this out in the same way, we can learn that the final momentum we're trying to find, or 1.01 .01 p sub i, is equal to the, the Lorentz form, the, the relativistic form of momentum. So m times v sub f divided by the square root of 1 minus uh, v final squared over c squared, and it's all in the square root. Uh, so again, we're going to want to do some approximating here. So that would be, so 1.01 .01 p sub i is just equal to 1.01 .01 times the approximation we found for the momentum. So that's about 1.01 .01 times 0 0.55, or 577, sorry, mc. And uh, rewriting this out, doing a little multiplication here in your calculator, this is about equal to 0 0.583 times mc. So what we now know is that 0 0.583 mc is equal to uh, our final momentum here, mvf divided by, and then the same stuff we've been writing several times now. Except we can simplify it a bit. We can cancel out the masses, since it's in both uh, formulas here. And now what we, really, what we want to do is we want to solve for vf, because remember, vf is what we're actually looking for here. So to simplify it, first we can get rid of this pesky square root here by squaring both sides. So we end up with about, um, we end up with 0.583c squared on this side. Um, or I guess we can uh, write that out. If you Again, if you plug this into your calculator and square it a bit, you'd find that this is actually equal to about 0 0.34. 0 0.34 c squared equal to vf squared divided by 1 minus vf squared over c squared. So now we've gotten rid of that square root. Now we can multiply both sides by this big term at the bottom here to simplify further. So that's equal to about 0 0.34 um, c squared times 1 minus vf squared over c squared. Uh, this doesn't make it very easily easy to simplify though, so one way we can rewrite it is to consider the fact that since we have a 1 here, um, we can get both terms to have the same denominator if we think of 1 as equal to c squared divided by c squared. So what I mean is, in practice, it'll look like uh, 0 0.34 c squared times c squared minus vf squared divided by c squared. So they have the same denominator here now. And we can see that these two c squareds will cancel out. So now our formula becomes 0 0.34 um, times c squared minus vf squared is equal to vf squared, the speed we're trying to find. So let's distribute this across the parentheses. So that's 0 0.34 c squared minus um, 0 0.34 f squared, the f squared, equals v sub f squared. And now we can add both sides. We, we want to get these two terms, these v f squared terms, together. So because there's a minus sign here, let's add 0.34 v f squared to both sides. So that will be equal to, so actually I'll write it like this to make it easier to understand. So that's vf squared plus 0.34 vf squared equals 0 0.34 c squared. And now, since we have the same variable here in both of these terms, they add together. So the coefficients would add together, which in this case would be a 1, meaning that our left side simplifies down to 1.0, or wait, 1.34 times vf squared is equal to um, 0.34 c squared here on the right. So now uh, we can isolate the vf squared on the left there as vf squared equals 0.34 c squared divided by 0.13, 1.34 vf squared 
and then find the square root of both sides to finally solve for VF. So that becomes VF is equal to, well, you see it, just 0.34 C squared. I do 1.34 VF squared, all in the square root. And we find that this approximates to about um, 0.504 C. So um, the C here just goes down to a C because it's squared originally, and the square root cancels that part out. And then I just um, divided 0.34 by 0.134. And uh, I didn't mean to write that there, ignore that. And that gives us that value. So our speed in terms of C is 0.504 C. And uh, if you want to do this for other percentages, you can plug in other values for this part right here and follow the same method and you'll get the answer.